G'day, it's Robbie again. In this video I'm going to be looking at finishing cutters for metalwork and in particular finishing cutters for machining uh, low carbon steel. Uh, that's that really <laughs> crappy stuff you can pick up around the place. It, uh, it's nothing like the good quality steels, 1080 and stuff like that. Where you can always get a good finish, uh, when you get on the low carbon stuff, some of it's very poor quality and it's very easy to get feathering on it uh, when you uh, try and get a finish. A lot of people often ask in forums how do you get a finish on, you know, crap steel basically. And it is, it is difficult at times but there are things you can do. And in this video I'm just going to show you basically a piece of low carbon steel I've got and you can see where I've roughed it up here with the roughing up cutter. Then I've come through and done a uh, semi-final pass with a with a TCMT tip which is still in the lathe that's a uh, good little replaceable carbide tip that ideal for small lathes doesn't put a big load on it you could run that on even an old machine without too much trouble and uh, I got that finished with that just a few minutes ago down the end here you can see there's a a finish a nice finish and that was done with a finishing cutter that most people would use, which is uh, the basic old high-speed steel, uh, small to medium round nose cutter with a bit of end relief. Uh, run that through at about 400 RPM on a fine feed and came up nice. If you set it up correctly, you shouldn't have too much trouble. So that's the standard sort of finishing cutter that most people would use. Now next to it is another finished section which looks slightly better than this. Not a lot in it but it is very slightly better. Once again there's no feathering on either of these. Um, here you can see there's a bit, a little bit, and here it's pretty bad. So what did I use here? Well I used a cutting cutter which is which one that most people I doubt would be much you know aware of. It's a pretty much little known cutter and it's called a shear tool. And a shear tool is different to a normal cutter in so much as whereas this has to go on the center line, a shear tool doesn't. A shear tool basically takes a totally different approach and a shear tool looks like this. So a shear tool basically is mounted in the in the tool post and you just mount it so that it comes up against the side of the the cutting edge anywhere on it won't matter and uh, basically it, mo it moves along the job and slices off a very fine wispy cutting. The shear tool is ground out of a piece of square high speed steel it has a 10 degree relief on the end and it has a 30 20 to 40 in this case it's about 30 relief for the cutting edge so it's coming across like this and you've got a 30 degree cutting edge 10 degree relief and the end is square or it could be slightly canted back this is slightly canted back it's just the way I ground it it won't make a lot of difference but um, square is best I could have done a better job on this I suppose but anyway it works okay so how good is it well you can see it's done a good job well, the limitations of it. Well, you can only do very, very light cuts with this particular cutter. If you do more than a thou, they'll almost certainly dig in and twist around and then it will just gouge the job. And you also have to use a very fine um, feed rate, the finest you've got, which you would be using anyway for a finishing cutter normally, a high speed steel one anyway. Um, and it's also a good idea to slow the, the lathe right down. Um, I actually did this bit here with this cutter at 400 RPM and, and it did a good job, no problem. But what we'll do is we'll run the cutter across this section here. I'll wind back the speed so we do it how most people would do it and we'll see how it, uh, how it performs. Right, well the lathe's set at 125 RPM and we'll feed in the uh, the cutter and see how it goes.
you can see that the cuttings that are coming off are long, wispy fibres, like steel wool. Totally different to what you would get with a round nose cutter. And as I said, you must only do very light cuts with this. If you go too deep, it will just hog in and spin around the tool post uh, because it's doing all the cutting on the, on the feeding edge of the side. I don't know if you can see that, but the finish is coming up pretty good. I'll back it out. And we'll have a, a close look at it. At what we've got. Okay, so here's the finish that we got with this sheer tool, um, sheer tool cutter. And as you can see, it's done a good job. Nice, no feathering at all. And if you compare that to the the finish we got with the uh, the TCMT carbide cutter, it's obviously a much better job. And if we compare it to the the high speed steel job um, this is marginally better um, quite good quite a useful cutter not for everything uh, you're limited in how close you can go up to shoulders with it because obviously um, a shallow shoulder like this is okay but if you've got something with a fair bit of depth in it it would hit the side of the cutting tool. So it's limited in what it can do, but it's very good for things like outsides of, say, flywheels or long shafts. Um, quite a handy cutter to have in the, in the toolbox. But as I pointed out, only for very, very light cuts. Um, otherwise, it can cause problems. But certainly if you're machining stuff and you're having trouble with, with it uh, tearing up, this is one to give a go. I mean, I did that dry. If we'd put coolant on it, lube, it probably would have even done a, a better job, but you certainly can't complain about that finish. So there you have it, folks. Um, another gadget for the toolbox, but a pretty useful one, and used within its limitations. Not too bad. Okay, I hope you found it interesting. I'll see you next time. Cheers.